The tests are what are called criterion reference tests. And if you've been involved in this, you'll hear them talk about it. In a criterion reference test, there's a right answer and a wrong answer. The other kind of testing is a norm reference test. That's testing on the curve. You know, you hope somebody, every, you hoped everybody flunked and you hated the kid who got a 95% because then it moved the A way up higher. Criteria reference test is like your spelling test. If everybody gets spells all the words correctly, everybody gets 100. If everybody spells them wrong, everybody gets a zero. It, you're, you're judged against the information content, against the criterion. In this system of testing, though, what the states did, and you've seen this because your kids got these papers, little Johnny was proficient. So instead of them, when you took the state assessment, saying little Johnny got six out of 10 correct, the state told you whether or not little Johnny was proficient. And in order to be proficient, he had to mat get what's called the cut score. Like in football, you make the cut or you don't. So here in New York, it's like a one through, three, one through four or one through five scale. And so if you were two, you were proficient, you know, above a two or above a three. That was the cut score. A cut score is a pretend number. Usually you get, to know, you get to know this many children were proficient. You don't get to know what the number means. You just get to know who was proficient. Well, how do they set a cut scores? This is from the Educational Testing Service. It's their own primer on cut scores. And they begin by saying that it's you make adjustments that increase the likelihood that the cut scores will support the purpose of the assessment. In other words, what do I want this assessment to say? I'll move the cut score to make it say that. The document goes on to say exactly that. There's no objective method. Everything is a subjective judgment of whoever is setting the standards, and that people disagree. There's no way to avoid the disagreement. It's totally based on the opinion of the judges. What do they want the test to say? The document concludes by saying it's impossible to prove that a cut score is correct. So. Here in America, this is a study from Princeton University. So the SAT, you know, you make it or not, and you get these artificial scores. Researchers from Princeton found that some of the colleges, especially the elite ones, if African American students took the SAT, they added 250 points to their score. If Hispanic students took the test, they added 185. But if Asian Americans took the test, they subtracted 50. And there was actually an article in, uh, the Los Angeles paper about it, where they explained this to Asian American parents and said, well, see, the goal of the score, because remember, you adjust the score to meet your policy, the goal of the score was diversity. And they said, if we didn't do that, four out of every five uh, ad ad admittees would be Asian Americans. And didn't these Asian American parents think this was terrible? They actually didn't. They wanted their children to get what they earned. Now, we can debate that forever, but the point is, you didn't know that, did you? So when you looked at that score, you thought it was actually showing an achievement level, and it wasn't. It had been manipulated because you didn't get the raw data. Here in New York, this is how you guys set your cut score. So a three was the cut score. Two wasn't good, not proficient, and a three was proficient in your last exams. And this was an article that was written 95. Uh, educators came together. They had to sign confidentiality agreements, but people didn't really like what happened to the scores in the New York test. And so this newspaper guy went back and interviewed them. And what they said was, it was um, not described. The panelists set the cut scores after they had the raw data. So they didn't say, this is good enough, and then we measure the students to see if they met it. They, all the kids took the test, and then they got it and said, well, if we put the cut score here, this many children will pass. If we put the cut score here, this many children will pass. So they could manipulate it. And what they said was, Pearson, that's your, the company that uh, you signed the contract with to do the test. They're also the company that provides remediation materials to children that don't pass. And the teacher said, we all knew that most of the student scores would be substandard because the process was manipulated in order to get the predetermined outcome. But again, parents didn't know that. In the test itself, and you're a park state, starting in grades six and seven, they can use a calculator when they take the math test, which means all they have to be able to do is punch a button. And in the writing test, they can use a spell check feature. So if you spell it wrong, a red line comes
underneath your thing and the kid can keep retyping it and retyping it until the little red line disappears. But you, as a parent and the person doing the scoring, they have no way of knowing if little Johnny took 50 little red lines to figure out how to spell that word correctly or if he did it himself. In some of the newer tests, there's a glossary feature that if as a child's reading along, if they don't know the word, they can highlight it with their mouse and it, uh, the definition will come up and if they can't read it, the test will read it to them. But again, you don't know which children those are. So you're not really testing achievement. You're testing poverty, the scores are manipulated, the test is done correctly. In this system, this is how it actually works. So here's Susie Speller, here she is. She's in this teacher, and the teacher decides in the spelling test, we're not gonna do uh, actual scores anymore. We're gonna use the cut score proficiency mantra. And teacher A thinks that all the children should feel very good about themselves at all times. So she said, if you, if you get seven out of the 20 words in the spelling test correct, you will be proficient. Parents don't get told it's 7 out of 20. They just get told little Johnny is proficient. So here's our Susie Speller. She gets 16 out of 20 correct. The next year, she goes to Teacher B, and Teacher B thinks that spelling is the most important skill that anyone should have anywhere on the planet. If you don't spell correctly, your life is over. So she sets the cut score at 18 out of 20. Susie's still getting 16 out of 20, but now all of a sudden she's failing. Her achievement didn't change. What changed was the definition of success inside this system. And in fact, for all the children who get between 7 and 18, all of a sudden, those parents are told, little Johnny's failing. Little Johnny's achievement didn't change, but nobody even knew what it was. So this is a system that is easily manipulated. So you have no idea what your child is actually doing. In my state of Pennsylvania, the Algebra 1 test, in the first module, there were nine possible points. If you got three of them, you were proficient. That's a 30%. I don't know any parent on the planet who, if little Johnny came home with a 33% on their paper, would say, congratulations, you're proficient. We would use other words. But nobody knew that that's what they were doing. And I debated the Pennsylvania Secretary of Education on television and brought the paper and showed it, and she said it was really not very nice of me to point that out. But she did not refute it.